time. <laughs> um, what happened to Mason Cox? Did, did you have any fear when you left the ground on Sunday night that it would be that bad? No, well, um, I seen him at half time down in the change room and he couldn't really see out of his eye, so I thought maybe just a bit of poke in there, have, have some water, squirt it with a bit of water, come back out and you're fine. But um, yeah, I, I actually, yeah, we didn't know about the seriousness until the following day. I, mean, I spoke to the doc that night and he said, yeah, get a, get a test tomorrow. And then obviously the following day, it came out that. He's out for the rest of the so, season, so unfortunately. Was it a fingernail? How, how do you... Oh, actually, I really you don't, don't know. know. I really don't know, Robbo. I uh, haven't spoken to him, but he, he wasn't in the club today, so I think he's still seeing the specialist. Um, yeah, just trying to look after that eye. Yeah. Oh, no, so he's out. So yeah, he's it's out. Really it's really bad luck. It really, we spoke about this, bad luck. It really presents a whole new exciting challenge for the Pies. They don't have to re reorganise a little bit. My check's becoming... He will become a very, very important player. Important, yeah, very good air elite. And do you have to do you have to sort of reshape your, your forward line, maybe go a little bit smaller? Well, yeah. We're not going to have the luxury of having a 211-centimetre giant to, to kick the ball to to create a contest for us. So I think the, the, the mantra or the philosophy we've gone, gone with the last 12 to 20 months is it doesn't matter on the personnel. If you're in there, you're, you're in the team to do a job, we're going to pick our best 22 players. I know this is straight down the line type of answer here for you, Robbo, but it's, it, that is the honest truth. We, we're going to pick a team to come out there, perform. We've got Melbourne this week who, who always bring their best against us. We're going to expect their best. We're going to pick a 22 players who are going to come out, try and play our brand of footy for longer, and then ultimately get the win. You have to change the delivery inside. You haven't got the six foot nine well, that, that's, tall. That's pretty much the, the only... Thing we've got to change. Is that really. a big change or is that a small well, change? Well, I, I wouldn't say that, no, because which one? Because it's he, not... it's not like Coxie is the only guy we're looking for. I think a perfect example was on the weekend we had eleven or twelve different goal kickers. Mm. So um, you get it to our four, you get it to any of our forwards one on one, which is what we did very effectively on the weekend, which is the thing we're most pleased with because the last couple of weeks we haven't been effective going forward with the footy. Um, I think we're harder and cleaner for longer inside, which is very pleasing. And then when we uh, got into our forward half to get the ball one on one to the guys like Jamie, that was down there, Brody Mindcheck, Will Hoskin Elliott took 11 marks. Best first game, class, best game first of the class. year. Steele played forward for the majority of the game and was arguably the best player on the ground. So we, uh, it was nice to have uh, a, a share of goal kickers across the field. How did you enjoy scouting them as part of the commentary team for Fox Footy? Oh, yeah, it was good fun. I mean, to Gold Coast credit, they were good in the first half and they really brought. I suppose, their strength, which is their pressure around the ball. But as the game unfolded, you could see them probably tiring and, and Colin were just able to move the ball and, um, and do what they will in certain parts of the game. But, yeah, they were, they were pretty complete, Colin Wood. And I think I said it on the coverage that they did it the right way. I think sometimes you can come up and have a nice lead at half-time or three-quarter time and then start to leer eyes. But I thought um, it was really business as usual. Oh, come on, Colin yeah, yeah, well done. What did they do wrong? Come on. What did who do wrong? Collingwood, where did you see in your commentary that you think, I'll just write that down, I'll take it to Goody. Where did you see holes of, or some I didn't negatives? See, I, no, negatives? I, didn't, I didn't see any holes. I saw um, a lot of positives. And no, no, I, I know that. <laughs> no, but, uh, any negatives? Clearly the way um, they handball around contests is a strength of theirs. Um, the way Gold Coast moved the ball in the first half was, was good, but they were probably too slow in the second half. Um, and that's probably how I saw... Saw the game unfold. So you'll go back and the other coaches, I'm being serious here. Mm. So you go back and say, right, this is what they do. Bang, bang, Trelaw is one of them. Quick hands, get it back, you know. So you'll, so Melbourne will be looking very much at the uh, at the stoppage. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always it's always hard. Our, our oppo guys don't necessarily look at one week because you don't really get a pattern. They might have played a certain way against Gold Coast that they didn't the week before or the week before that. So. Um, every side has their strengths, no doubt, and every opposition side knows what they are. It's how much you want to concentrate on those and how much you actually want to back your own system in and see how you go. Keys had less than 33 times this year. Yeah, I, I, under, I understand that, and they, they sent um, Tuke Miller to him, um, I reckon, the second quarter, maybe. Um, but, yeah, as the coverage was unfolding, um, you know, we, he probably didn't play in the right way. He's just so dominant. And yeah, clearly a arms, guy that you always have to look at. Arms for um, Trelaw. You, you become you, a coach, you don't you? Are you telling him how to do, deliver into the question. forward line? That was a question. Oh, well, cer certainly you'd have to look at it. I mean, when a player has 30 plus possessions, two goals, and was so dominant, 
you'd be stupid not to look at We've it. We've got a lot of good quality midfielders. Nah, you're getting jagged this week. Pendle, Steele, <laughs> Tay, who got a lot of good quality Crazy midfielders. <laughs> How did you enjoy yeah. the commentary? Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was funny. I just um, listened back to a little bit of it before. Um, and I think it's my third time doing it. So you probably do... Um, you do drag the what you're saying and, and trying to articulate what's going on a little bit more than you probably should. And I've done a little bit of radio and it's so different. You know, TV's sort of in and out when you need to be, whereas radio you can try and describe the play a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, it was good. It was nice to do it with a local so level lad as well. So you're looking forward to doing it full-time next year? See how we go. <laughs> Jerry will have a word to <laughs> someone. Yeah. time. Hey, we thought we'd go down a path tonight, so the filmmakers are about to join us in the next break from, uh, from the Collingwood documentary, From the Inside Out. There are four stories told. Yours is one of them. A have you seen the finished product? I have. What? I have. Do you, how did you feel when you were going to sit down and watch it, knowing all uh, the source material that they had to choose from? A couple of things. I was nervous. Um, I, I was pretty emotional, to be honest. Uh, they were probably the main two, actually. Nervous yep. and emotional. I think emotional was the first thing because one of the, the hardest things for me is is still, and I'm honest about it, is the grand final. The fact that we were so close to winning it the year that we had last year and not not necessarily about myself and the story in, in that. Really, just the fact that we didn't win still kills me, still breaks my heart. Considering that we were up for majority of the game and obviously didn't get the job done, full credit to the Eagles. Um, but that first bit, you say, the first bit where I'm not going to give it away, but it just, yeah, it just. We've got some footage. Just, we? Uh, we do. Just breaks me heart almost every time. So the, the first part is where Bucks talks about. I don't know how to lead you. It's the immediate aftermath. It's, it's of that. It. It's, it's the most the powerful stuff. Do away. you remember those those words from the oh, day? Straight, they're the. I remember two things from the day. When he hugged me straight after the granny, when we lost, I was bawling my eyes out, and he come up to me and just told me that he loved me. That's pretty much. It and it just meant so much to me that he could have. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Told me he loved me. And the second thing was those words. I don't know how to lead you. And he, you could see he was holding back tears. And I remember just sitting there, my uh, my head in my hands, bawling my eyes out. So yeah, it was. Uh, it's quite emotional when I watch it. Yeah. Um, hopefully next week I can go to the uh, the premiere. I want to go and watch it and see everyone's reception of it. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. But yeah, very emotional for me. And then your personal story, which you tell unflinchingly. I am so I admire you so much. Even the camera into the um, to the psychiatrist's office when you're talking. So here's a and again we don't want to give the whole film away because it's a beautiful film. It is here's a, a little snapshot of it. No one really knew that I was struggling. I sort of tried to hide it a lot. I had a lot of things going on externally, so that sort of led to the, my beliefs of me not being a good person and I didn't have guidance away because it was so internal I wasn't really talking to anyone about it. In that stage in my life I was in such a, a deep period where I was just you know regarding myself as a terrible human. I remember just being in the spa and getting really really upset. I was starting to tear up and starting to cry and I just uh, would put my head under the spa, wipe my face and my, you know, I suppose my tears away and then hop up and continue with the chat whoever I was with um, because all the boys were there. So I messaged Maxi. He said, call me as soon as you can. How did you steal yourself to to be willing to tell that story? Yeah, I get I get emotional thing, like seeing that now. Um, no, it's just, I just, I think it's important that people outside of footy understand that we are human beings. Um, you know, you, you deal with so much. We deal with anxiety on performance, um, expectation on performance, um, people ridiculing you if you're, you know, it, it seems like some people, and this is what was getting to me, and by no means am I out of it. Sometimes I still have my struggles. Um, people judging you as a person the way you are as a player, and I think that's the furthest from everything because... A lot of the times, and I reckon Jordan can vouch for this, when you cross that white line, you're, you're generally a different person because you're ferocious, you're competitive, you, wanna, you want the footy, blah, blah, blah. When you step off the field, you're a different person. I mean, I, I love everyone. I'm a, I'm a lover. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I care for everyone. Um, I want everyone to love me. That's how I am. I know I'm not going to always be universally liked. So 
yeah, I, I had my struggles. Um, yeah, and I, I just felt like I needed to. I felt like I wanted to. I felt like it was the platform for me because it's going to be a story about four unique individuals. I'm going to be one of them. Um, and I, I just wanted to welcome people into my life and see the stuff that I go through and to where I am now because obviously I'm involved on the show, I'm involved in the media a bit, so people seeing me now can see that I am improving. Um, I still have my struggles, but um, I, th I thought it was something to talk, uh, important to talk about. You'll, you'll love this show. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah and, and I think unbelievable. Um, Fantastic. externally Fantastic. watching the way that he plays and I'm not, you know, pardon me, but seeing that he's such a good player and a dominant player and one of the key players, not only in the Collingwood side, but also the AFL in general, seeing that there is that human element and that no matter how good you are at your job, whether it be football, what you guys do, you always feel that uneasiness of having to perform. And that goes right through from the first year player to a 15 year veteran, to a coach, to whoever, because our game is so public. So that's why we try and tell our, especially the young kids coming into the system, understand who you want to hear criticism from, any other sort of feedback from, but also create a thing away from football that you can really separate and go to when you want something happy to, to be in your life because sometimes football can be a really dark place. Have you had levels of anxiety about performance? Um, I suppose anxiety is probably, probably not the word that I would tell myself, but just nervousness. And, you know, I always get nervous before a game, whether it be this weekend or not, because you want to perform and that's part of, I suppose, being a professional athlete. I don't think anxiety is, has crept in, but certainly the uneasiness and the nervousness before games is still there. One last question, I haven't asked you. How difficult is it, Adam, hiding it from people? Oh, it's, it's almost like I'm two different people. When, when I talk about the experience that I went through, um, I, I felt like I was a fraud. I felt like I was coming into the club um, not showing what I was really like and as, as in that clip you seen when I mentioned I was crying in the spa that was directly after a game we we'd beaten Carlton it was after a game last year we'd beaten Carlton we'd won the game you know we'd all played really well I was just overwhelmed um, I don't remember what it was but I was just in the spa and I remember there's a couple other players and I was just walking around the little island that we have and going underneath the water crying crying and then hopping up Wiping, it looked like I just had, I was obviously in the water, so you couldn't tell I was joking and crying. laughing and being the... Just trying to be normal. And then I remember if it wasn't for for my partner, Kimmy, for Nick Maxwell, Bucks, Jackie, who's my psych slash really, really good friend, my family, I probably I probably wouldn't be playing footy, to be honest with you. Really? I, I was at a point last year where I could have easily... It was almost like the hamstring injury that I had was a blessing in disguise for me because I was at it at, at I was at the end. I almost wanted to, and that's the brutal truth. I, I was I almost wanted to stop playing, and if it wasn't for them guys, the love and support that I have from my teammates. I mean, I, I love that group of guys. I love the Collingwood Footy Club. I'm always going to be a black and white man. I absolutely love the place. So, I still have my struggles, but from where I am, 12 months ago, I am that far ahead. It's all there in the film. Um, that is I awesome, salute you. mate. I well salute done, Adam. Again. It's brilliant. What have we got here? Uh, Footy Colours, Colours Day. Day. So Footy now you're Colours both Day. deeply involved in this, aren't you? And the jumpers we've put together to bid through at uh, AFL 360. Signed by everyone at the club, yep, Jordan. Everyone at the club. So both jumpers would be signed from the club. But this is a charity that Adam and I have been involved with for probably three or four years now. Um, so it is any day in September, whether it be your workplace, school whatever it might be, dress up in your footy colours and all donations go to such a great cause and it basically provides kids that are going through um, treatment, cancer treatment, with an education. So just quickly, on average, a kid that goes through and diagnosed and goes through um, chemo or whatever other treatment, you spend about six months away from school in such an important period of your schooling life, so these guys provide education to those kids. Bid up AFL 360 at foxfooty.com.au. Amazing for Tuesday. Both of you. Brilliant. Fantastic, it's, mate. It's, yep. let's, let's do it more often, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of Jack. Jack, <laughs> yeah. send through the ratings <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Open Mic follows 360 tonight. We're about to meet the filmmakers uh, from our Collingwood's documentary as well. Andrew Dunkley. So the fractured history between he and the Swans, it's all there with Mike as he returns tonight.